All right, at this time, we'll begin the Texas News Conference. We're joined by head coach Karen Aston and student athletes Selena Rodrigo and Brooke McCarty. Selena is a senior guard, Brooke is a sophomore guard. We'll begin with an opening statement from Coach Aston, then we'll follow uh, with questions for student athletes only. Following that, student athletes can head back to the locker room, then we'll take questions for the head coach. When we do have a question, raise your hand. When you ask your initial question, please state your name and affiliation and then ask the question. At this time, we'll begin with Coach. Uh, welcome to Austin, everyone. Uh, it seems like it's been a, a long time since Selection Monday. It's been a, a long week, and I think our, our players are, are ready to play. I um, thought we've had a really good week of practice. Our, our players came back from a, a couple of days off last weekend and, and seemed to be rejuvenated and uh, quite proud of, of uh, the opportunity to host in Austin this weekend. Uh, we're looking forward to it. It uh, should be a terrific challenge tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. All right, at this time, questions for Selena or Brooke? Yes, back middle. No mic? Uh, no mic, no, nope. oh, sorry. I'm looking forward to it. Nope. No, no mic. <laughs> Brooke, the uh, coach made mention of it. It seems like forever since Selection Monday, and even before that, you guys hadn't played in, in such a long time. Does it, how do you, how does your, how do your bodies feel? How does the team feel having that huge gap between um, we feel good. Like Coach said, we had a um, weekend where we got to go home and just visit with our families, and I think that really rejuvenated us. We all came back, and we're just kind of ready to play. It's been a long time, but our bodies feel great, and we're just ready to go out there and play tomorrow. Selena, you first, Brooke second. Uh, Rick Cantor, the Austin American Statesman. Um, you've had time to check the Alabama State tape, obviously, by now. What are the challenges that that team presents, and do they resemble any team that you've played this year? Um, yes, they're a great defensive team, um, and so we're definitely going to have to make sure that we limit our turnovers. Um, they play pretty aggressive, and they they play hard. I mean, they're a team that they're always going to play hard and go after the ball, um, similar to West Virginia, um, just very aggressive on defense and active hands, and so we'll need to make sure we take care of the ball tomorrow night. Yeah, they're um, – I would say they're similar to West Virginia, too. They play very aggressive. Their defense is really good. And they also know how to win. And so we just have to go out there and we have to play our game because they know how to win. And so they know how to defend. And we have to limit our turnovers. Now that it's actually here, how exciting is it to all year long, coach has been talking about wanting to host. You guys are finally getting to host here. Tipping off tomorrow. How, what's, what's the excitement level around this team? Uh, it's really exciting. We're just ready to play tomorrow and go out there and we get to compete on our home court again. And so that's really exciting. Yeah, like she said, it was um, one of our main goals from the beginning. And so just having this opportunity is something that we we're really looking forward to. And so we're just excited to play in front of um, some familiar faces and go out there and compete. I guess John Hyde, uh, KTBC here. You talk about playing at home. Just, what does playing here do for you? Um, I think we're just, you know, we're comfortable at, you know, everybody's comfortable at your playing at your home court. Um, you know, we're used to the court, and we'll have probably some some familiar faces out there with the fans. Um, and so I think just having that and um, being, you know, our usual routine, um, just being in our locker room and things like that, will be um, pretty comfortable. I mean, we'll, you know, we know the gym, we know everything, and so we're just really looking forward to it tomorrow. <laughs> You're a senior. Yes, it has. I mean, um, you know, but it's exciting. You know, I'm really looking forward to just just playing every game as hard as we can with my teammates. Um, it's been a great four years, and uh, I'm just ready to keep that keep that going. What's the talk been like with you and your, your fellow seniors about? I mean, next loss is the last one. Trying to keep this going as long as possible. <coughs> Right. Um, we, of course, we're just focusing on one game at a time, and so we're just gonna our plan is just to give everything we have um, each game and stay in the moment and just enjoy everything we've accomplished and hopefully continue to accomplish. Brooke, you guys play one of the toughest conferences in the country, if not the best. How has the Big Twelve prepared you for what lies ahead? Um, I think the Big Twelve has prepared us. Because every game that you go out there, you know it's going to be a battle. And so I think the 
just like the, playing against the people in our conference, you go out there every night and it's a challenge no matter who you're playing. And so going into playing these games at their season, it's going to prepare us. It's, I mean, we've seen everything. And so whatever people throw at us, we've seen it previously and we're just ready to play against it. Um, I think every year we just gain a little bit more experience, um, especially the the upperclassmen, um, saying that we've gone a little bit farther every year we've been in the tournament. And so I think just uh, taking that experience and having the young players learn from it um, is something that is very valuable to this team. How hard is it to focus on just one game at a time? I know coaches making sure you don't stay there, but how hard is that as a player? Um, I mean, it is difficult at times, but I think just um, we've learned that as a team that it's uh, the importance of just staying in the moment because um, we don't want to look ahead at um, anything else because, you know, anything can happen. So we just want to make sure that we're focused, like you said, on the next game and that alone. Um, I think that, like you said before, our, the Big 12 has really prepared us. They have big guards, and so I feel like we've been competing against bigger guards all season, and so it's going to be a, a good matchup. Any additional questions for the student-athletes? All right, thank you, ladies. We'll now take questions for head coach Karen Aston. Coach, on the uh, familiarity of, of being here for your players, is there a potential danger zone with that too? Just I mean, the last time in Texas, different, different players, different coaches got bounced in the first round. How do you fight against familiarity becoming complacency at all? Well, you try to, um, first of all, make the practices as competitive as you can leading into the tournament. Uh, obviously, you want to have a, you want to have fresh legs and everything that goes along with having to play um, so quickly. If you were to get a win, um, and I'm saying anybody, they have to turn around and play pretty quickly. So you want to make sure that you have as much energy as you possibly can going into the first game and. But on the flip side of that, I, I took the opportunity this week to get back to basics a little bit with this team and try to try to remind them of kind of what, why they are where they are. And most of that was competitiveness and hard work and some detail. Uh, so we got back to that, and we focused a lot on that um, before we turned our attention to Alabama State. So I, I do think that our practices have been productive. And I think as a coach, you can kind of tell when a team is either wanting it to be over or complacent. All of those things kind of go into a category that's not a positive thing in the NCAA tournament. And I, I don't see that in this team at all. I think they're really excited to be at home. And they worked all year long to be able to do this. So I think the last thing they want to do, and, and again, I mean, it happens. It happens to the best of them. Um, which is to lose unexpectedly. It happens all the time. We saw it yesterday. We saw one today already. There's only been four games played, and there's been an upset already in the women's game. So it does happen, but I don't think we worked all year long to look over anyone. You mentioned the layoff between selection mm -hmm. one day. You had a week before that when you last played. How does that affect your team going into to this tournament where it's bang, bang, bang? Well, I think it, it actually playing on Saturday, which we were a little surprised at. I, I think we may have anticipated, and who knows why. Uh, we thought we might play on Friday. So when we got the word that we were going to play Saturday night at 8 o'clock, it actually enabled us to take a midday off 
um, and concentrate on film and, and some detail, but not necessarily having to do anything physical. So I was kind of pleased with that because we had gone pretty hard uh, for a couple of days. So to be able to take that breath on Wednesday and then get right back at it Thursday and today um, has been a positive for us, I think. Practices have been really good. I, I've... I like this team and the way they practice it. It's kind of the reflection of whether you think you have a team that has potential. And I, I go all the way back to in, in November when I really did know this team was going to be special. You, it's the way they practice. And some teams you have to beg to go hard. Some teams just they just don't have it as far as liking practice and being competitive. And this team actually enjoys practice I think I'm, I'm sure there's some days they don't but most often they're once they get out there and get warmed up they're ready to go uh, teams you've seen have success in the tournament that you've been around is there a common thread that allows teams to get on a run this time of year I think part of it is the experience of going through maybe certain processes and I and I've talked about that a lot with our program which is that we, we needed to take steps to get back in the hunt again. One of them, obviously, was to get in the tournament. One of them was to win a game in the tournament. So we've kind of taken these consecutive steps every year. But I do see kind of a common denominator between teams that get to the tournament consecutive years in a row. Um, they, seem to, they seem to kind of understand what it's all about. And I, I give you an example, which was the upset today with Albany winning. They just... I think they had a great experience last year and almost upset Duke. And then you see them actually have an upset today. And I think that a lot of that is because they've been there and done it. And they, they knew they were good. They knew they were OK. And that's why Alabama State has an opportunity to be successful and why we better bring our A game. Because they are used to winning, as Brooks said. Um, I like it that my little point guards are paying attention to what's going on because Alabama State knows what they're doing. And they know how to win, and they have been there and done this. And they are not intimidated by the environment at all. You talked you talk about your, your team being focused and not overlooking them. But how, how, do you want, how confident do you want your team going into this? I mean, you want them to go in there with some kind of – Absolutely. We're in Austin, Texas. We did all this work to play in front of our fans, and our fans help us be confident. I mean, that's the thing. I hope everybody comes out tomorrow night because – I, I do feel like our fans were a part of this. A, a part of us having the opportunity to play here was having a home court advantage. I, we lost one, one game this year in the Irwin Center. So our fans were a huge part of that, and we want everybody to come out and help us have that home court advantage. That, that's why you do this, because you do feel – you feed off of your crowd. A lot, a lot of players do. And uh, for us to be able to have fans in the stands that we, that we know and love, uh, that should make us um, a little hungrier. <clears throat> Alabama State, what are the challenges that you face against them? And like I asked the players, do they remind you of any team that you've played this year? Um, I would say yes and no as far as reminding me. They, the players compared them to West Virginia, and I mean, that's their eye test, so maybe that is a, a somewhat of a comparison. I would say they're comparing them to West Virginia because they – they play hard-nosed defense. Uh, they, they play really hard to get up the line, get in the passing lane, try to, try to disrupt you. So I think that might be why the players think that's familiar. Um, they're going to present some problems for us because they do match up with our guards. And the four position has been a position that sometimes we, we either match up with or we kind of don't. And we sort of have to play the, the forward position by committee this year. I think everybody can see that we've done that. And I think Brittany Wright, presents a challenge for us. So that will be something that, again, we'll just have to make sure that we keep constant defenders on her to keep her off the boards and, and to keep her from getting having a hot night. Who are you going to start at the four? We'll start our normal lineup. We'll, we'll start Ariel at the four. But it's a committee. We all, I think everybody can see that we're playing the forward spot by committee. Players seem pretty grounded. Mm -hmm. Do you as a coach have to do any reminding that, you know, the big carrot may be two or three weeks from now, but you can't get there unless you take care of today. Do you have to remind them anyway? Well, I mean, you definitely have those conversations about not getting ahead of yourself because, I mean, 
they can get caught up in listening to what everybody else is talking about instead of what's reality. And reality is tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. But I, I, I've been pleased all year long with this team's ability to not look forward. I mean, we've had experiences in Big 12 play where, I mean, I'll use the TCU game as an example, where we needed to take care of that to have the opportunity that we had in the following game. And then you look at the Big 12 tournament, and it's one game at a time. So I, I think they've really learned how to stay in the moment. I've been really pleased and impressed with this group. I think it's because they just like playing. They like playing the game. They enjoy playing basketball, so I, I don't think they want it to be over by any means. I'm trying to get them out of the gym right now. <laughs> Let them rest their legs. Yeah, we've had some, as a staff, each, each individual coach kind of, um, the, you know, they go to certain individuals, some of them their position coaches, but uh, we've talked a lot just down the stretch of not only now, but also in Big 12 play, just, you know, what the seniors have meant to our program and um, that it's one and done. So I think they they understand. They, they want this thing to go on longer, and I, I think they'll play like they want it. They want to keep playing. Sometimes it's difficult for seniors because they want it so bad, they have a hard time sometimes executing things down the stretch of their careers because they want to be successful and they don't want it to be over and all that. So it's kind of a fine line between kind of not talking about it and just let them play. She's fit in perfectly. Uh, you know, Tina's personality allows her probably, I would guess, to fit in anywhere perfectly because she's confident, uh, compassionate, knowledgeable. So I, I think anything that you put her in front of, she's very capable of handling. I haven't asked her because well, that's something that sort of saved for the end of the year conversations, but I would think that it's been a huge learning experience for her if you were to ask her just because she played pro basketball for 17 years and now she's coaching 18 to 20 year olds. So I, I would, and, and the recruiting side of it, all of that is just so different than what her world has been like. Um, but I, I, I think she's going to, to be a terrific coach in the future and she's been a, a really positive um, impact on our program. <clears throat> Any additional questions? All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you.